we're gonna talk about how I study. Because for those of you who don't know, I'm about to turn in my class and we're gonna keep it that way. So if you know me, I study, but I'm not like studying all the time because like I have a life, I have a job and I have friends and I like to like go out and go to concerts, go see movies. I'm not studying all the time. And this is kind of how I do it. Essentially, my whole entire study method is usually some form of a blurting method in which you are forced to recall the information from your brain without referencing any notes or any textbooks or anything like that. So specifically with the blurting methods, you would usually have a set of questions or a list of things that you need to answer or fill in and then you're just going to try to blurt all the information onto something so this can be a piece of paper it can be your notebook it can be a whiteboard it can be anything and then go ahead and check your work and when you're checking your work you're going to fill in what you've missed and then you're going to erase all the answers and then do it all over again until you basically don't miss anything and that's how I basically study from a closed note closed book and you were being recorded at the same time and basically I I have modified this study method for almost every single class so i'll go into how i kind of study for biology so first taking notes i stopped handwriting my notes for biology because i just realized it was way too time consuming and while it's very pretty it's not a super effective study method i'd be behind on notes and then i'd also be behind on studying so no it just wasn't cutting it for me so my biology teacher posts our lecture slides before class and then I download the PowerPoint and then I kind of shrink what she has already put on there so that I have space to type on the slides as she's talking. As she is explaining what is on the slides, I am typing down what she says and then trying to translate it into my own language and trying to understand it by not only just hearing what she's saying and typing it down, but also trying to like process it and turn it into something that I can understand and then study on and make questions off of, etc. You see what I'm saying? That's what I do during class and then post class I will create the questions for my own kind of study guide so she gives us a study guide but I realized that it actually wasn't very helpful on the exams I found that creating my own study guide was more helpful than looking at what she was saying so I create my own study guide I use the slides and the textbook to create questions from that so anything that's not covered in the slides I will take a couple questions from the textbook because sometimes there's information that she kind of brushes over in the notes but then and she quizzes it because it's in the textbook on the chapter so i make sure that i go over that and i get questions from the textbook as well and not just my notes or the slides then once i've created questions then i go in and use the blurting method on those questions so filling in the questions as much as i can without referencing my notes without referencing anything just filling it in from what i know in my head and then checking my work and repeating that process until i don't get any questions wrong so that's how i study for biology to give you guys a practical example I'm gonna talk about my calculus class and probably the lowest grade that I have ever received thus far. I had my first quiz for my calculus class a couple weeks ago and I got a 75%, which was insane for me because I don't think I've gotten anything ever less than like an 85 or something on an exam. So that like scared me. Like I was like, it was bad. It was bad. You see how my hair is like trying to stick up? Yeah, it was bad. But I was like, okay, there's two ways I could have handled this. I could have decided to let this grade define me and then tank in all of my other classes as well or how I actually handled it, which was moving forward and then just try my best on the next quiz. So I thought to myself, I was like, okay, I got a 75, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, it sucks. I let myself feel it, but then I move on, okay? Cause we got things to do. We got assignments to do. We got quizzes. We got more tests coming up. I had the next test for the class two days later. So I didn't have time to be wallowing or being in my feels. No, I had to get it. I had to get it together. So I got myself together. I studied for the test. I made sure that I reviewed all the concepts that I knew would be covered because he said what would be covered and then I did a bunch of practice problems like until I could do it until I could do all the problems not with in my sleep but until I could do all the problems that's how I did it then in my first test for my calculus class I got 100% so yeah it just really goes to show that like you can like change and if something's not working fix it if something is working continue doing it but if you realize that you can't not study then you need to study but if you realize that you don't really have to study for a class then don't don't study. I just really have to adapt to get the scores and stuff that you want. Don't do it. Okay, if 
a study method isn't working for you, if something isn't doing what it needs to do for you, if you're not getting the results that you want, then you need to modify your method and you need to change the way you're studying to get the results that you want. If you realize that not studying is going to make you fail, then you need to find a study method that works for you so that you don't fail. Or if you realize that you tried the study method, you tried flashcards and you got an 85, but you actually wanted a 92, then maybe don't use flashcards next time because they didn't work for you as well as they could have or should have in your mind. Now, obviously, I don't want to like force undue pressure on anyone into thinking that an 85 or a 90 or a 92 is a bad grade. None of those are bad grades, but I am always constantly striving to be the best student that I can be, to be the best at everything I do. I know it can get to be a toxic concept, but not the way I see it. I just see it as I'm, I'm in competition with myself and I'm constantly trying to one up myself. So I did really well in Chem 101. So I expect myself to do very well in Bio 101 as well. So there's like that level of like, not only do I need to, but I want to do the best in everything that I do. And part of being able to do that is modifying things that aren't working for me. So like for my next bio test, I'm gonna have to figure out something else because I don't want to get an ID next time. I wanna do better and I wanna be better and I wanna know the material and I wanna know the concept more. I also do like to romanticize my studying a bit as I'm actually doing it. So one thing for me, I've never really been a person to listen to music while doing homework, but I recently started being that person. I haven't created my own playlist yet, but I've been listening to basically two or three different playlists when I'm doing homework. So I either listening to this studying in the library playlist on Spotify that I found or I listen to my own playlist which is Taylor Swift's entire discography which is basically just literally every Taylor Swift song ever or I'll listen to like my early morning or chill playlist because that has very like calm not super beady songs so that I can kind of drown it out and then focus on my work if you can listen to music and focus do it if you can't don't do it don't try to think that you can multitask if you can't because if you cannot physically like drown out the sound of like the lyrics of the music then you need to listen to non-lyric music but if you can't even drown that out and you see you find yourself focusing on the music and not on your work then just don't listen to music you don't have to listen to music to do well and i know some people recommend like going into a different space to like motivate yourself to study but personally for me that has never been the case in fact i don't really study that well when i'm actually in school i can do homework well in school but studying i like to just study in my room i'm a homebody i love my room and I just like I can't I can't I can't get myself to start studying in a place that's not my room because it just feels wrong like I don't know if that's just me but I like I like the idea of working like in a Starbucks or a coffee shop or the library but I would just get too distracted by all the people around me and I wouldn't be able to sit down and focus on my work because I'd be too focused on the fact that people can be perceiving me and I don't like to be perceived okay stop perceiving me please <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious though stop and then especially with your studying don't study what you already know if you like let's say you're in a history class and you already know what happened in the civil war you know all the dates you know all the times you know all the important people don't study the civil war then when you're studying for your u.s history test because you know all of that instead skip the parts that you know and really go in on the things that you don't know but be careful with this don't skip over parts that you think you know but in all actuality you actually don't know them so you might think that you are very good on the civil war but then if you quiz yourself you take a practice test online you find practice questions online about the civil war and you fail that then you need to study that but the biggest thing is like gauging your knowledge so questions and doing filling that in which is the first gauge of knowledge really and then filling in the blanks in your knowledge so filling in the gaps and doing so through active recall just in case if the test is open no, great you'll be fine if the test is closed no, great you'll be fine because you know the information either way yeah. so that is it for this video that's kind of how i study how i pass my classes i'm gonna hope this video helped if it didn't i don't know what to say if it didn't but if it did be sure to leave a like and comment down below and subscribe we're on a road to 3,000 subscribers i would love for you to join a little group my little family a little click and yeah that's it for this video bye guys